Hey guys, welcome back to the Tiny Lab build site. Today we have finished insulation and we're going to show you how it looks under infrared. We're using the FLIR T660 thermal imaging camera to show how the heat bleed is working now that we actually have the insulation over everything inside the Tiny Lab. So let's go inside. Welcome to a freshly insulated house. In fact, this place is the best insulated house on this entire block. And we know that because all we're using to heat this place is a work light and it keeps its heat all day long. So as you can see behind me, we've got insulation everywhere that there is not wood. You want less wood in your house generally and to an optimum value so that you can keep the structural integrity. But when we're talking about insulation, there are a few things that you need to understand. First of all, the uh, insulation behind me is a fibrous insulation. There's only two kinds of insulation, so don't let it get confused for you. There is fibrous and there is foam. Fibrous insulation can include anything that is made up of fibers. That means mineral wool, rock wool, uh, fiberglass, cellulose, sheep's wool, hemp, denim, anything like that. That all is the same, and the insulation value of those is going to be about R3.5 to R4 per inch. So in this case, we've got two by four cavities, which means that we have an R15 in the walls around me and in the ceiling. Uh, that's a pretty good insulation value. And we know that that's optimum for us because we ran an energy model, which you can see more about in the webinars that we were using to prep and design at the Tiny Lab. The other kind of insulation that a lot of people will opt for because they think that it's sexier and better is foam. Foam comes in two types. There is spray foam and there is rigid foam panels. Uh, we did use some rigid foam panels in the floor and on the outside of the roof. But in general, we are staying away from spray foam. So make sure if you are going to go with spray foam that you have somebody who is a super well qualified professional who comes with good referrals because uh, there are a lot of people out there who can do that wrong and that becomes very dangerous. So let me show you a couple of the features of this insulation. When we talk about insulation, whether it's fibrous or foam, we're talking about basically the same thing, which is controlling heat bleed. You don't want heat coming into your house from the sun or from the hot weather outside or leaving your house in the wintertime in a very fast, uncontrolled way. And one of the main things that you need to think about is continuity. So when we talk about continuity, we're talking about number one, the framing, the things that are holding up the house structurally. You want them to be enough to make sure the house is strong, especially in the case of the tiny lab, which is a touring tiny house on wheels, which means it has to be built to withstand an earthquake and a hurricane at the same time on a regular basis. Uh, so we used all kinds of extra framing strength and plywood on the outside and on the inside to make sure that that happens. And you can see the other videos about that. Uh, but as far as insulation goes, the more wood you have or steel or whatever it is. And by the way, if you're thinking about building with steel, just remember that steel is 400 times more conductive to heat bleed than wood is. But you want to make sure that in all of the spaces where there's not wood that you put insulation in and not just any insulation and not just in any old way. You want to make sure that the insulation is easy to work with. That was one of the things that we had a problem with with the first kind of insulation we tried out. It was just very difficult and ornery to um, work with. This stuff, you still have to wear a mask, you have to wear gloves, but you can cut it with a bread knife. It's nice and easy to put in and it holds itself up into the cavity with a friction fit. You can get insulation that's got craft uh, paper facing on it and it has these little tabs on the side that you can staple and a lot of people will staple those to the inside of the studs. That's bad because any time we have a little tucking action boop, like that, that means that my insulation is not going to work very well. Uh, so what you want is to make sure that all of this is pulled so that it's perfectly flush with the face of the sheathing that's going to go on the inside of this, whether that's drywall in a normal house or plywood in our case. Uh, by the way, be very careful. This stuff gives you splinters. I just got one. Um, so make sure that it's installed very flush, that there's no compressions or squishiness. And that was kind of difficult in places like this down here along the wheel well. Uh, where it's a triangular space and it's kind of weird and I had to tear a bunch of little pieces up and stick them in there. But you want to make sure that when you're sticking them in that the air that is in that insulation is still nice and springy because the main ingredient in all of this insulation and in all of the foam insulation is actually air bubbles. It is not the material that you are installing itself. It's only that material's ability to hold little air bubbles. So we've put all this in 
now we have a pretty continuous uh, layer of insulation in the cavities where all of the studs are not. Now what we could do also is add insulation to the outside of this house in an exterior continuous way where there's this monolithic layer of insulation. We couldn't do that in our case because we have a maximum road clearance limit and we decided to save the space. Another issue is this wheel well right here. This is solid steel. Uh, the wheels are right on the other side of that. So as you can see, it's actually pretty cold to the touch. It's a little bit chilly outside, even though we're building in Florida. So we're gonna to wanna to cover this with more insulation and it's difficult to do with the stuff that we've selected. Uh, so that's why we have built a box out of foam. This is super sexy. It's cut to fit. We measured it very carefully and it fits right over our wee wall. So now we'll be able to tape the edges of this to make sure that it's also airtight and we'll be good to go. We'll have a pretty continuous layer of insulation over the floor, the walls, and the ceiling of our tiny lab. So thanks very much for watching. I hope this has helped you. Tune in next.